This is a bus stop in San Francisco, but why is it so bad? Some see it as an attack on the most vulnerable. Something called hostile architecture. The term is in reference to new benches that make laying down impossible. And hostile architecture is somewhat of a plague on the design of our modern cities. Simply imagine if the city you lived in was designed to make your day-to-day -day life more uncomfortable. You can find hostile design in almost any city, but in San Francisco, it is particularly popular and it is getting more and more common. We're gonna look at a bunch of examples of San Francisco's hostile architecture, including these horrible bus stops. Design the city claims will save it $25 million a year. The most inhumane version of this I've ever seen and a whole bunch more. Hostile design or architecture is designing something with the intention of stopping someone from doing something else. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, and we are gonna see a bit of both. But typically hostile design is built to stop homeless people from sleeping or putting their tent somewhere that people don't want them to. And that is especially true here in San Francisco. And it is really controversial. We will talk about why after we take a look at these bus stops. Just a couple of years ago, bus stops looked like this. But now they look like this. Can you spot the difference? They're definitely gross. They used to have glass on the back, which was really nice because you could lean on it, and that's definitely not an option now. Now they have this bar, but it doesn't really work that well. I guess you can sort of lean here, but it's only this one seat. And the glass made these almost too habitable. It gets very windy in San Francisco, and the city definitely did not want homeless people staying in bus shelters when it's cold. Plus the vandalism issue was super bad, so they just stopped replacing the glass altogether. Plus these armrests are pretty ridiculous. You can only arrest one arm at a time, and they're too low. They're just not comfortable. All they really do is stop you from laying down. But at least it's not as bad as these. Yeah, in San Francisco, this is a bus stop. And nobody's gonna spend the night in a bus stop that just does not exist. But if you look around just a little bit, Hostile design is everywhere in San Francisco. These rocks are just here to make it uncomfortable to sit or lay down. This is the Powell Muni stop, and if you're a tourist, the cable car turnaround is right over there. And these spikes are not here for decoration. We are on the edge of the Tenderloin, a neighborhood known for homelessness and drug dealing. So these spikes just prevent anyone from lingering here too long. You can see where there used to be benches all along this row. UN Plaza, this whole fountain is shut down to keep people from sleeping in it. This is one of the busiest street corners in the city, and this realtor really wants to make sure people aren't hanging out outside their office, though they are at least somewhat decorative. These are to stop skateboarders. I think you already know what these are here for. This only serves one purpose. I wonder what these planters are for. Actually, I know exactly what these planters are for. This is the SF LGBT Center, and these planners look nice enough, but the purpose of them is to keep people from sleeping in these alcoves. And if you didn't have a place to sleep, this might be a nice place to do so. They're in here to keep homeless people out there. They're out of the way from pedestrians and the wind. It also happens to be around the corner from one of the most perfect examples of hostile architecture that I have ever seen. planners look really nice and there sure are a lot of them, but you may have already guessed that their purpose is not just to look nice. And it isn't really to look nice at all. It's just to block people from putting their tents here. But one of the keys to good hostile design, if there is such a thing, is disguise. If you didn't know any better, you might think these are planters. And this is a neighborhood that's really popular with tourists, so disguising your hostile design in a place like this is important. But these planters aren't the only thing that make this such a good example of hostile design. It's this fence. And there are a bunch of them here. All disguised to look like they actually need to be here. But let's take a closer look. This is a nice enough garden. And they talk about displacement. It's a community garden, which is kind of cool. This is supposedly an art garden. And you know what? It looks really nice too. But it's definitely closed. More planters and another fence. But this time, 
closed for no reason. Perhaps the most surprising thing is that the city did not put these planters and fences here. The residents did. So are the residents responsible for this? Or is the city? Cities everywhere use hostile architecture, but San Francisco is unique. Here it's often the residents and business owners doing these things. One of the more public examples of this was when boulders suddenly showed up along the sidewalks on Clinton Park. Their purpose was, of course, to stop people from putting tents on what is clearly a very narrow street. But the city was completely baffled at how they got there until the residents admitted to putting them here. Everyone flipped out about the injustice and eventually the public works department came in and removed all the boulders. Why the residents couldn't just put planters here, we'll never know. So it's hard to say that the city is responsible for this instance of hostile design. Well, maybe that's not true. This is 6th Street in Soma, and behind me there are a bunch of supportive housing facilities, though there are a lot more in the Tenderloin, and we are going there next. One of the reasons hostile architecture is so controversial here is because of San Francisco's city shelters. They suck for a whole bunch of reasons. First, there aren't nearly enough to house everyone. San Francisco is terrible at counting homeless people, but at best, they have enough shelter space for around half of residents at any given time. They're also extremely dangerous. Drug overdoses are common, violence is frequent, conditions are horrible, they are all short-staffed. And if you enter a shelter, your chance of dying is really high. According to a report by the San Francisco Chronicle, about a quarter of the people that left supportive housing in 2020 did so because they died. That was 131 people out of around 6,000 total in the system. Less than a quarter of people who left went into what the city considers permanent housing, and typically that's staying with friends or family. So you are much better off trying to live on the street or trying to sleep on one of these benches than you are sleeping in a shelter. But the homelessness issue is a huge one all over California. It's led some people to do some truly horrific things, which we will see in our next stop in the Tenderloin. While most hostile design has some actual benefit, the next stop does not. A couple months ago, this hotel was caught with water sprayers hosing down the sidewalk out back intermittently. This was, of course, to prevent homeless people from camping there. Obviously, there was outrage, and the hotel said they took them down. Let's go see if they really did. It looks like they're gone, but now they got some of these. Not nice ones. This is Van Ness, and this is the billion dollar bus lane. You'll see planters like these up and down both sides of the street. Obviously, they're not here to look pretty. They don't even look that good. Their sole purpose is stopping homeless people from pitching a tent on the sidewalk. Here's a bunch more. Another incident happened here in North Beach. A gallery owner was caught spraying a woman with a hose. This is pretty tough to watch, so I'm going to blur some of it, but you will get the idea. Obviously, there was outrage across the city, and people even flooded his Yelp page with one-star reviews. Though somehow those are all gone now, and maybe that's because there was more to the story. Turns out this man had been repeatedly calling the city to try to get this woman help. And after a long time, they still hadn't done anything. He had also been calling the police, because it was reported that this woman was throwing actual feces at him and his customers. And it's really hard to run a business like that. And what he did is not okay but it isn't hard to understand how these conditions drove him to do what he did. Just like how the conditions on San Francisco's public transit systems are driving them to make some costly changes. If you've ridden public transit anywhere in the Bay Area, then you have witnessed fare evasion. BART, which is just the train, claims that this costs them $25 million every single year. And based on the average fare, that means that 5.6 million people don't pay. To fix this issue, they tried these crazy metal guillotine things. Not surprisingly, this upset a lot of people. Because while fare evasion is a common issue, there are a lot of people that ride BART and they just don't want to get their hands chopped off. Plus, it was still really easy to just jump over. So they got rid of those and tried these double guillotine things for a while, and they actually claim they work pretty well. But that was obviously a lie. Look at this guy. Plus, you can just go underneath. And this made life a lot more difficult for people with bikes, suitcases, or other large items. So now they have this new $90 million system designed to end this problem once and for all. They're calling it station hardening. 
police told me they work and it certainly seems like most people aren't having too much trouble with it. And they are doing their job of stopping fare evaders. But it's clear that some people aren't getting through super easy. And while you're probably thinking, good, everyone should pay for the services that they use, this is just the pilot site for these turnstiles. And it's in West Oakland. Oh yeah, we are in Oakland now. Which is one of the poor neighborhoods serviced by BART. So if nothing else, the results that BART's seeing here are gonna be a little different than what they see everywhere else. Though I did hear they're going into Civic Center next. This isn't the first time BART has been accused of using hostile design. Our next stop is another controversial station. Downstairs they have these benches, and by now you know the story. In a Vice interview, a BART rep said the metal strips work as an armrest, but between you and me, they don't. And finally he said the quiet part out loud. They segment the benches into individual seating areas so no one person can sell stuff or use it for sleeping. In other words, they don't want homeless people here. He also said armrests are required by code on all transit facility benches. Back upstairs, these benches don't have any armrests. And neither do most of the seats on these brand new cars. These have some, I guess. No armrests here. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, but be nice. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably like this one too. See you next week.